Welcome to the Alpha Training and Consulting's online training program. Today I'm going to talk to you about how I passed 18 ASQ certification exams. I learned a lot along the way of how to pass an ASQ certification exam. Today we're just going to go over one of the lessons. In later lectures I'll go over other lessons to help you prepare for an ASQ certification exam. Uh, by the way, please help keep Alpha Training and Consulting at the top of your mind when you choose uh, what company you're going to go with to prepare you for an ASQ certification exam. Why not to com come to someone that has passed all the ASQ certification exams? Trust me, uh, nothing makes up for experience. So please keep us in mind. I'd be honored to have you as one of my students. Now, here's all my 18 certification exams. These are very challenging exams. It took me over 20 years to obtain all of these. I was co pretty much constantly uh, studying for a new certification uh, for about 20 years. And again, I've learned a lot. And it's great getting all these certifications. It gave me a lot of notoriety, a lot of good advertisement for my company. That's all good. But I'll tell you, the best thing that came from all this studying is the knowledge I obtained. And so ASQ exams, they're a great um, vehicle to help you learn more about quality and how to create it and how to sustain it, etc. So it's a great exercise for all quality professionals, in my opinion, to get ASQ certification exams. All right, let's move on then. In this module, we will discuss my first rule for passing 18 of ASQ's certification exams. And there's my business card. Look at all those certifications I have listed there. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? A lot of people will laugh when they see that, but when it comes time to giving out the contracts, I usually win. Uh, what, what is there to learn about that statement? ASQ certifications come with a lot of credibility. So those are great certifications. Okay, moving on here. What is rule number one? Here it is right here. Rule number one. Don't compare your price of knowledge to anyone else's price of knowledge. It's none of your business. Okay. Let me ask you a couple questions here on this topic. Does knowledge come at a price? Hmm. If so, what is the price? And we all know, yes, knowledge comes at a price. What is the price of knowledge? Well, there could be many different prices, but you, you have to pay the instructor. You have to pay for the materials. You have to pay for the facilities. But most importantly, and what I'm going to focus on today, you need to study. You have to study. That's the main price of knowledge that I want to talk about today. Does everyone have the same price of knowledge? And of course the answer is of course not. Everyone has their own price of knowledge. Some students have a relatively low price of knowledge. They will listen to a lecture and absorb all the knowledge and be able to recall it at will. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Other students may have to listen to a lecture, the lecture five times or 10 times or 20 times before they understand it. Do you see what I'm saying? Everyone has a different price of knowledge. Whatever your price of knowledge is, it doesn't really matter in the long run. The most important thing to remember is to never, ever, ever compare your price of knowledge to anyone else it's none of your business. That's rule number one, remember. What is important is that you understand what your price of knowledge is and you embrace it. You are not ashamed of it. You embrace it. Okay, it takes me six... I have to listen to the lecture six times before I understand it. That is, you understand your price of knowledge. And you're not ashamed of it. In fact, you embrace it. Okay, it takes six times. Let's do it six times. Get it over with. You embrace it. The only reason you'd be ashamed of it is because you're comparing it to someone else's in violation of rule number one. Everyone thinks it's so great if everything's easy. But it's not. And it's somewhat harder for some than it is for others. We're going to talk about that. But imagine this, if you will. I give you a forge, and I give you some beautiful metal, and I say to you, 
make a beautiful knife out of this metal. And so you uh, go get the steel, you weld a handle on it, you put it in the oven there, and you get it up to temperature, you bring it out, you hit, take the hammer, bang, you hit it once, and you say, see, it didn't become a knife. Life's not fair. And you throw it in the garbage and you stomp out of the forge. That's what I see a lot of students do. Because they're ashamed of their price of knowledge. No one hits the metal once and turns it into a knife. You have to hit it multiple times. And if you're spending all of your time looking at your neighbors, seeing how many times they have to hit their knife to make it a beautiful knife, you'll never finish your own. You focus on your job at hand, and you hit that metal as many times as it takes to create a knife. So keep that in mind as we go through this. If you break this rule and compare your price of knowledge to others, then I, your teacher, cannot help you gain more knowledge. Because your brain will just freeze up. Comparing your price of knowledge to others is the most destructive force in education. It is the most significant reason people end their pursuit of education. Just because they can't control themselves and they compare their price of knowledge to someone else saying that life is not fair, I can't do this, and they give up. Comparing your price of knowledge to others has significant social costs, such as low self-esteem of the people and poverty. I would argue that poverty is not the lack of money, it's the lack of self-esteem. And lack of money is just a byproduct of that root cause. Comparing your price of knowledge to others is not allowed in my class. Should you ever decide to be one of my students, it will not be tolerated. And I can see you doing it. And I will call you out on it. And yes, I can see it. I can see it in your eyes and I can see it in your body language. Do not think for a second that I can't see it. I know exactly what I'm looking for. Because I've been there and I've done that. And I know what it looks like when others are doing it. This is called a learning curve. There's the black one and the red one here. Yours is probably, you know, somewhere within that range. Notice this one has a very, the black one has a very steep slope. What does that mean? It means that over a very short period of time, look how much knowledge they get. Over this much time right there, they get this much knowledge. Wow, that's amazing. For the person on the red curve, if that's your learning curve, you take this much time, not this much time. Wow, that's a lot more time. And it true, it's true, it is. And the person on the black curve will get all the good grades at school. The person on the red curve here will be towards the bottom, but they'll, they'll get through. And I would argue there's some advantage of this red curve. You know what the advantages are? You're learning something that the black term isn't picking up on, the black learning curve. The red learning curve is learning something that the black learning curve is not going to learn. And that is how to struggle. The red curve, you're going to learn how to struggle. This is a very important lesson. And a grade in a classroom is not powerful enough to pick up on how well you learned that lesson. So I wouldn't worry so much about the grade you get in class. I'd worry more that you're doing your best. And if your best means you get a C, that's okay. You did your best. No worries. You learned how to struggle along the way because you worked real hard to get that C. And so you learned how to struggle. This is very important. It'll serve you the rest of your life, trust me. If you don't give up. okay. If you don't give up, if you do give up, you'll never learn how to struggle. You'll miss out on the advantage of what this red path gives you. You'll miss out on the advantage if you give up because you will never learn how to struggle. But if you don't give up and you're on this red curve, you're going to learn how to struggle. And again, this is going to serve you well. 
So let's look at this rule that I have tucked up here in the corner. Rule, to reach your true potential, you must learn how to struggle. Everyone does. I don't care how you are, I don't care what your learning curve looks like, for you to reach your true potential, you're going to have to learn how to struggle. And so you may be, feel bad that that's your learning curve, but you shouldn't remember. You're not supposed to be embarrassed about it. You should embrace it. Why would you want to embrace this? Because this one is teaching you how to struggle if you don't give up. If you do give up, then you'll go up here, oh, look at this. At this point, this person has this much knowledge, and I only have this much knowledge. Well, now you're comparing your price of knowledge to someone else's, and you're going to want to give up, and you probably will. If you, that's why you do things. And your learning curve is going to stop here going up, and it's just kind of dwindling down now. This is what happens when you compare your price of knowledge to others, and you give up. But you shouldn't give up. You should keep struggling, and eventually what you find is there's a volume discount for knowledge. And you'll find the more knowledge you get, the easier knowledge is to obtain. In fact, if you'll notice, this curve is much like this curve. Now, your price of knowledge is like theirs, but you have one advantage. You've learned how to struggle. And so you'll pass. Eventually what happens is you'll pass this black curve. You'll pass right by it and go to your true potential. That's what really what education is about, is getting you to your true potential. And part of that is giving you an environment where you have to learn to struggle if you're to survive. So that's the red curve. At first, it looks like it's a terrible, uh, <laughs> a terrible, uh, something that's terrible against you. You think life is really unfair and I got the short end of the stick. But when you start getting up here, you say, wait a minute, you know what? That was of great value to me and you pass right by those other people. And they're wondering, hey, what's going on here? I'm supposed to be the smart one around here, and that dumb guy just left me in the dust. Because you learned how to struggle. And you went past that point, you didn't even know you had to struggle, because you've been struggling all along. Now let's look at this black curve. It has some unique elements, too. What happens if you're on this black curve, and you compare your price of knowledge to someone else? What happens when you compare your price of knowledge to others? You stop becoming greater the instant you think you're great. That's another rule. See, over here, they compare their price of knowledge, and they say, wow, look how great I am. It only took this much time to get this much knowledge, and it took them this much time. I'm smart. I'm great. You start thinking you're great. And the rule is you stop becoming greater the instant you think you're great. In other words, you become arrogant. And that stops your growth. So there's a disadvantage to this black curve. And if you want to get up here, you have to learn how to struggle. You have to humble yourself, and you have to teach yourself how to struggle to get here. Everyone has to learn to struggle to reach their true potential. Now, if you don't become arrogant, you can just continue on to your true potential. And so hopefully you understand rule one a little bit better. Remember, never compare your price of knowledge to anyone else. All right, thank you for joining me in this lecture. Hopefully you learned something new that will be helpful to you. Um, now remember, I have a lot of ASQ certification prep classes. You can put this on pause because I have a website for every class. So find out which one you're interested in and... Uh, Go to that website, you'll learn more about that class. And of course, if you have any questions, there's my email address right there. I'd love to hear from you with any questions you may have. All right, thank you, and have a great day. Goodbye.